When I was younger, back in the mid-70s, my husband and I lived in an apartment complex. We were fairly well acquainted with the couple who lived above us. They were an attractive couple, but their relationship had been evolved to one to say the least. They fought constantly over any and everything, and from time to time, they have been known to take shots at each other with a snub nose, 38 pistol, the man owned. One night, what I feared for months happened. They got into one of the heated arguments, but this time, it ended with the woman shooting the man to death with his own gun. The man fell to his death on my porch, right in front of my front door. No charges were brought against her after the woman pleaded self-defense. Less than a week after the man's death, she began to behave irrationally. She became jitterly and claimed to have seen the man in her bedroom on more than a few occasions. Once she'd said she saw him climbing up the wall beside her bedroom window. Less than two months later, the woman packed up and moved hastily out of the apartment and no one ever saw her again. Man. One night about six months ago after the man had gotten killed, my husband and I were entertaining friends. Among them have been my husband's uncle who had legally blind since his early teens. It was late summer and as will happen in summer, a fierce thunderstorm struck with plenty of lightning, high winds and blowing rain. The storm lasted for well over 20 minutes. However, the festive mood left with the storm and everyone prepared to leave for home. My husband and I walked to the door with our gas. I was the first one to reach the door only to find that something was blocking the screen door, but I couldn't see anything that could have been responsible for it. After pushing it hard a few times, the door finally opened and I stepped out into the rain-drenched porch and saw that something was wrong. Even though the entire porch was soaked, the spot in front of my door was bone dry and was even more eerie was a fact to the dry spot was in the shape of a human being from the shape of the head down to the feet. And it was lying in the exact same position my neighbor had fallen in when his wife shot him. No one wanted to believe it, even though several people witnessed this weird sight. To validate it for myself, my husband's uncle leaned down and felt the long, dry spot with his hand and left him speechless. We moved out of that apartment several months later, but until we did occurrences like that kept happening in the apartment. These events took place over the summer of 1998 while I lived in Boston. This particular summer was very rainy and there was quite a bit of flooding. The first experience happened one Saturday night while out with friends. We were traveling west along the Mass Pike during a downpour. I was seated in the back seat when suddenly I saw that the lights in the passing cars had illuminated what appeared to be a man walking on the side of the road. From what I could see, he was an older man involving. He appeared to be in one of those wife beater t-shirts in light color pants. He was also carrying something. This is the best I can describe him, given that the windows were blurry and there were raindrops everywhere. I mentioned to my friends that this was such a horrible night to get stuck on the side of the road. Interestingly enough, my friends didn't see that man. I kept waiting to see a car stall with his hazard lights on, but we didn't pass anything. I had forgotten about this incident until another night I was driving by myself during a rainstorm on the same highway. What do I happen to catch out of my eye? The same darn man in the same clothes walking up the side of the highway. There was no broken down car on the road either. There was a part of me that was tempted to go back and see if I could find the man. But there was another part of me that had a really bad feeling about this. This was an experience that would go on, moved on to repeat itself several more times throughout that summer. This didn't just happen on the Mass Pike either. I had it happen while traveling on 699 and also on Route 2. It did not seem to matter if I had friends with me or not. I seemed to be the only person that saw this man and he only appeared when it was raining. I don't understand why this is happening. He had no other discernible features other than the ones that I described above. There were no deaths in my family or any other bad experiences that year. 
I started to think it was a warning of some sort, but I can't think of what it might have been. To this day, I still have no idea what the purpose of this was and why I was the only one that was seeing him. I feel like my life might be Hispanic creepiness. But here's something that happened to my mother and me a few years ago when I was visiting home from college. It was spring break and I flew down to South Florida to see my mom. One night I come home a bit early from hanging out with friends at around midnight. It was raining pretty heavily and the power had started flickering on and off. So I decided it would be best if I just went to bed since I couldn't watch TV or go online. My mom also decided to go to bed as well, but she's an insomniac and while trying to fall asleep, she heard noises coming from our backyard. She looked through the blinds because only see darkness. She went into my room, woke me up and told me that she thought there was something going on in her backyard. Our backyard is fenced up with a screen patio, which is locked with a screen door. We both went to a window and looked through the blinds and I could see that these really faint shadows, but it was dark. I decided to flick on the lights to our backyard. As I flipped the switch on and off, I realized the power was totally gone and that meant our alarm system was also disabled. I pressed my ear against the glass while still hiding behind the blinds in my room. I heard a clanking sound that you would hear if you rattled an empty aluminum can with a coke tab in it. I thought I heard voices, but I couldn't be sure because of the rain. After sitting at the window for a few minutes, my mom and I decided that maybe it was just our imaginations. Although, neither of us wanted to go outside and check it for sure. There's probably no one outside. I said to my mom, I could see she was really worried we are both petite women. We both went to our respective rooms and a few minutes later, I heard a loud bang. Sound was so loud, it echoed through the house. Without thinking, I immediately jumped out of bed and ran towards the window that overlooks our backyard. I ran so fast that I slipped into the tile floor as I came out to the window. I pushed the blinds away only to see a faint crack on the window that was spreading quickly through the glass. I realized immediately that the grass is cracking, it was probably going to shatter. At this point, my mom was at the window with the two hurricane flashlights. We shined them through the crack, but it was still intact. We shined them through the cracked, but still intact glass, only to see the patio door swinging wildly outside. But no one was out there. After the storm subsided, we called the cops. We all went to the patio door to inspect it and make sure enough of the lock had been tampered with and the cops said it looked like there were several people out there by the look of the grass and bushes. The bushes like they were trampled on. As for the glass, the cops said it didn't look like someone hit it with anything because the glass is cracked in a million pieces, but it didn't shatter. There was also no sign of an impact. After the cops left, my mom and I reasoned as a loud bang could have been the glass snapping because of the pressure change from the storm. Maybe that sound freaked out whoever was trying to break in. This happened when I was 13. My parents would often go out for dinner on a Friday and leave us home alone with some hired videos pizza and my brother in charge. My brother would often leave his friends placed down the road on the same street and then leave me in charge. I like this because I like being in charge and got to choose the movies. This Friday night, it was stormy and raining on and off. There was some lightning and thunder around. I was watching a movie and my two brothers were playing in the carport. It was a large open plan space you can fit four cars under because my mom and dad were out. You could skateboard and ride a bike and do all sorts of things. So much room for activities. Standing in our carport to the left as a park. We had no neighbors on the side, so you'd often see people using it as a footpath for walking their dogs, riding their bikes, and running into the night as there was some half-decent street lamps dotting along it. If you went out of our driveway, you could go straight into the park. It was a great place to grow up. 
This night, my brother was the road as usual and had written his friend's number down and left us to it. I was probably into our second movie for the night when my two younger brothers ran in and said a man is watching them from the park near our fence. Now, I normally think they're playing a joke, but their faces had that different concern to look, so I thought I'd better come have a look. We head back out to the carport, standing in the driveway looking out towards the park. There's no sign of him. There's a lightning flash, and it lights up enough just outside of the carport that we can see the man my brother saw is now standing in our yard watching us. We all screamed, slammed the door, and ran to mom and dad's room, locked the door, grabbed their phone, ran the cord to the bathroom, and locked that door. We called my brother's friend's house. His friend answers, and I told him there's a man in our yard. He yells out to my brother and then says we are coming up on their BMX bikes. The wait was probably not even five minutes till they arrived, but it felt like ages. When they left, my brother told his friend's parents that they called the police, and they came up as well. We came back out of the house when they arrived, calling out to us. When they arrived, they said the man was gone. Soon after, the police arrived, and then another vehicle that went up to the park. It was sort of scary that night, but the police searched our house for us, and the yard, and the streets, and the park. It seemed pretty reassuring at the time. And to me, my big brother was fearless and always looked out for us. Having him back home was just as reassuring as the police being there. My parents arrived home not long after with two police cars at our house and the neighbors in the driveway and my brother's friend's parents there as well. This was not during the time of mobile phones, so I'm thinking that they were wondering what had happened as they came into our driveway, probably had their heart racing. I don't recall hearing the man that has ever found her cots years later. When I moved out and my younger brothers took over my room, my dad told me one night, my younger brother woke up, my mom and dad, why does a ghost? Their words were that he said, a man woke him up saying, hey boy, are your parents home? My parents never told any of us that at the time but the timeline fit with them changing the real big open window fly screen. I'm almost 27 years old and my story takes place about nine years ago or so. I don't remember exactly. I remember an old friend of mine and I have been talking about paranormal things that we believed in. How many people we knew believed and that sort of thing. We've been sitting at this house and got restless, so we decided to take a drive in his car. It was a very cloudy night and they were calling for heavy amounts of rain. It was probably about 7 or 8 p.m. By this time, we get maybe 30 minutes from his house and the rain starts pouring. We had been just making small talk and listening to the radio up to this point. A short while, we round a curve and to my right is a giant open field. And about that time, a bright stream of lightning lit up the sky over this field. And I happen to look over and I see not one, but many, what I believe are spirits of some sort standing in this field. Some are doing everyday type things. Some are just standing there while others were walking around looking lost. One thing I noticed is that while we were driving past, every single one of these spirits stopped and stared directly at me as we drove by. I thought maybe after we had driven and I looked back, I would have found that it was just my imagination. But as I looked back, in the sky lit up again, I could still see them there, just no longer focusing on me. I also remember that night after I got home rather shaking and definitely afraid. I was having a dream about something attacking me. It was an evil presence, I remember. That, and I can remember it, bit me in my dream. And about that time I woke up, I felt the pain on my arm and not in my dream. I looked down and there were bite marks on my arm where this presence had bitten me. I am still not sure what to make of these experiences. The bite was not caused by an animal as my dad would not allow me to have pets and all the doors and windows were closed. Just curious as to what everyone's ideas may be on this.
This happened when I was about 15 years and 5 months old. I was staying in my grandmother's house whilst my parents were on holiday. It was about November 2009, and in the south of England, the weather is normally very wet and cold with lots of storms. A couple of months earlier, I had been in my grandmother's kitchen, which faced the back garden. It had been raining, very hard. It was just starting to slowly stop, and it was about 5.30 in the evening. I was cooking dinner for my grandmother as it was my turn, and I had been staying around for a couple of days. I looked out of the window to see if the rain had stopped, and this black figure of a man about six foot tall walked by, had his collar of a raincoat, that it was wearing up, and I couldn't see the face at all. It was just a black figure. I took further in the kitchen, scared. It then went out of my view, and I ran to tell my grandmother about it. She said that she had so many experiences of that same thing that she had named it Henry. I was a little shocked about this at first, but I plucked up the courage to continue cooking. That was my very first encounter. Back to that night, I was up in my uncle's old bedroom, which is in the attic. The actual attic was separated into two parts, a mini hallway in between, one room for a bedroom, and the other was an actual attic. Neither had doors on it, though. It was a very stormy night in the high winds and heavy rain or rampant. This was about half ten at night. I heard footsteps up on the stairs, and, thinking it was my grandmother checking in on me, I shouted, Nan! There was no answer, and this black figure appeared in the doorway, and it looked exactly like Henry, but I wasn't sure. I then screamed, Nan, as I was very scared, and it vanished, but I heard footsteps going down the stairs. My grandmother then came into the room wearing a white nightgown. I asked my friend that lived down the road if he had experienced anything like that that night, and he did, but with one difference, he had a door, and before the figure appeared, the door opened, and after, it closed. Has anyone had any ideas what this Henry thing might be? Maybe it's just another ghost, and why does it only appear during very rainy weather or storms? I was 15 years old when this happened. Around that time, my mom began leaving me at home alone a few nights a week for a couple of hours at a time to teach an agility class. That particular night, she left for her class at around 7.30 and soon after it started pouring rain. This didn't really bother me as I've always found the rain to be peaceful. I came downstairs out of my room to watch something on television. Now, the television in our living room sits in front of two windows which look out to our front yard. Our front yard is partially covered by small forest that separates our house from the neighbor's house. The center of our yard slopes downwards and then again back up. So when it rains, it creates a river flowing across the yard and about a half a foot deep. Since it was pouring rain, the yard flooded fairly quickly. While I was watching television, the power was knocked out due to the storm. I didn't have much else to do besides sit in the dark and wait for it to come back on. You heste then, lightning flashed, and I noticed a movement between the trees in my front yard. Who the hell would be outside in the rain like this? I decided to go peek out the window. I couldn't see very well, because it was so dark out, and because we have screen in our windows. But I thought I could make out. Not a figure standing between the trees in my house. The lightning flashed again, and that removed all doubt. There was definitely someone there. My heart started beating so fast as this person was standing only about 20 feet from my front door in the pouring rain, staring at my house. The figure stepped out of the forest indirectly into the river, flowing through my yard. Then they placed their hands in the pocket of their hoodies. I couldn't see their face at all as they had pulled their hoodie down. I backed away from the window, scared. I felt like I shouldn't be scared because I know it's quite hard to see into my house from outside, but somehow I felt he knew I was there. Curiosity got the better of me and I pulled the curtain aside and picked out again. Just then, the person pulled out one hand of their pocket and raised it in a waving motion and then placed it back in their pocket. I, 
Flipped out, I ran to find my crappy little Nokia phone to call my mom. I dialed desperately, and she didn't answer the voicemail. I looked at the time and saw her class had about five minutes left. I kept dialing and redialing, praying that she'd answer. She didn't pick up. I kept picking out the window at a few seconds until I realized that they had moved a few steps closer. Then, the power came back on, and lights on our porch flickered on. As this happened, the person hesitated for a second, before turning around and bolting in the opposite direction. About 15 minutes later, my mom arrived back home. When I heard the back door open, I raced the kitchen and hugged her and started crying, asked her why she didn't pick up her phone. She said her phone had died on the way to class. I told her what happened, and although she tried not to show it, I know she was legitimately freaked out. She told me to go to bed, and that she would take care of it. I didn't sleep that night or several nights after that. She never did tell me what she did do to take care of it. When I was 25, I'm 28 now, my girlfriend and I were living in an apartment building in Phoenix. Our downstairs neighbor clearly had some mental issues going on. He was probably in his 60s, super skinny, always wore really tight tank tops and short shorts around. This is not the mental issues parts. The apartments were built in the 70s. Obviously, they have been renovated since then. Instead of the horizontal blinds, they had vertical shitty ones now. No more carpet, updated appliances, you know what the renovations are. But his apartment had been, it was exactly the same, only his in the entire complex. I only know because he usually had his blinds open and I had to walk by his place to get to the stairs. He would always yell and bang things around his apartment and when it rained, he would go up on the roof. We had a patio roof thing, not an actual roof, and just scream, I mean yelled the sky. And when he wasn't yelling at the sky, he was yelling, dang it, in his apartment, over and over. And he would come outside and pace around mumbling to himself when it was raining. Now the creepy part, I was into photography at the time and it was raining and lightning. So my girlfriend, my friend Chris and his girlfriend went on the roof with me to try to get some shots of the lightning. Of course, Wildman, as we called him, was on the fourth floor on his way up to the open area of the roof. He asked us what we were doing. This was the first interaction I've ever had with this guy. Even though I saw him all the time, I told him that we were trying to take a few pictures of lightning. Why the hell would you want to do that? That's stupid. So we just said, okay, dude, and went on our way. He followed us over to the roof. So we said, fuck it, we're leaving walked over to the elevator. He followed us again. We got in the elevator. He just stood outside of it, looking at us. I put my girlfriend behind me and Chris did the same. I didn't know what this guy was about to do. Just stood there. The doors closed and we all kind of check what inside, a relief, then like a horror movie. The doors opened again. I guess he pushed open the button and while Ben was standing there, he told us to go away and I told him that's what we're trying to do. The doors closed again and the elevator went down. We all went back to my apartment and were considerably freaked out. I grew up in a very small town. It was the kind where everyone knew who was who and what they've been up to. We had an elementary school of our own, a church, a small market, and very basic one-off establishments. Being such a small community, there wasn't much need for vehicles in this town, but most people still had a truck or family vehicle. I've been going to this elementary school for years now and had never had any issues. I was about midway through this section of school, and by this time, I was trusted by my parents to walk home on my own. You'd see other neighbors drive around in the distance picking up their children, running errands, but no one really paid much attention to anyone else on foot outside a kind wave now and then. I can't remember how long I've been walking home from school, on my own at that point, but I was used to it 
and never faced any issues and people following me or anything like that. It wasn't until the first rain of that season. Looking back, how cliche is that, that I had an encounter with anyone else? Ever since I was little, I loved storms. Walking in the rain was almost therapeutic. When most would want to get out of the rain, I'd bask in it. Listening to the thunder and pitter-patter of the rain was calming and made me feel as though I was connected with the rhythm of nature, in place, just where I needed to be. I was sucked out from this mental safe haven when a man pulled up in a dirty, wrestled old white truck. Hey son, need a ride? He asked. I was skeptical. Years of school warnings of how you should never talk to strangers or take candy or get in a car with them replay it like clockwork in my head. No thanks, I'm fine, I'm walking. I said, oh, it's fine. Son, I know your parents, he tried to reassure me. Something didn't sit right after he told me that, for knowing my parents he didn't look familiar, I'd never seen him visit nor had I seen him around town. No thanks, I tried again, I prefer walking. I wasn't far enough from home at this point to need a ride anyway. If he really had known my parents, he wouldn't. He wouldn't have asked. He would have known that. Come on, son. It's pouring cats and dogs out here. Just jump on in, and I'll get you home safe and sound. And I glared to him and let out a 30. No! Have a nice day, sir. To which his eyes widened, probably not expecting such a reaction from a kid my age. He looked offended and raised his window while speeding off down the street. It was at this point of the truck, without stopping for the stop sign, quickly turned to the right, squealing his tires and turning off the street that LED out of town, rather than to the residences. Once I got home, I explained the situation to my parents, and they said they'd never seen anyone who matched description, nor had they seen a truck like that drive around town before. I never saw that guy again after that day.